Hey everybody, it's me Stacy here at Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com and it's time for our next Saturday with Stacy, YouTube class number 412. Oh my goodness gracious, I am channeling my inner burr <laughs> because we will be featuring my next set of kaleidoscope dies, simply defined kaleidoscope layering dies that are holiday based. This is my one and only holiday collection for the year. This is it. So I have got technique to show you. I've got beautiful, beautiful samples to share with you. But before we get started with all of that, I want to give you some updates and then I've got some, well, I've got just a lot to share. So first things first, warehouse sale update. We are on day four. Four. We are now sh uh, filling and quality controlling day four, which means we are done filling and shipping day one and two. We may still be shipping a little bit of day three, but day four is up and it's quite a ways into day four. That means if you made a purchase on day five of our warehouse sale, if you were able to get a Spellbinders embellishment for 25 cents, you know who you are. <laughs> If you placed your order on the fifth day and you chose pay later, please note that those invoices are on the way to you. They are coming via PayPal, but you don't have to have a PayPal account to pay for it. Once you get the invoice via PayPal in your inbox, just scroll down a little ways and it'll say if you'd like to pay by any other credit card. And you can certainly do that. Or you're welcome to call us here at the store and we can take payment over the phone for you. So day five is coming up. I, I did, I told you once we got past day one and day two, things would go much faster and they most certainly are. So that's your update on the warehouse sale. I need to say a big thank you to uh, SMS Peep who sent me a gift and it was so practical. Now I've already taken some of them out of the packaging, but I am constantly saying, gosh, Sizzix, why can't you make a little tape dispenser because I always get the end of the tape lost and I can't find it. Well, this wonderful customer sent me these. There's three to a pack. Look at how cute it is. And it keeps the tape so I don't lose it. It will actually tear the tape for you if you want. I try to tear it myself so I leave a little extra and then it stands all on its own. Oh my goodness gracious, these were so cute and I love them and I'm so thankful for them and I wanted to let you know that they are here and the first thing I did was go and try and find more of these. It's from a company in Japan. <laughs> So I've never heard of this company before and I couldn't find more of these, but my gosh, this is a good invention, a really, really good invention. So I want to send a big thank you to the wonderful SMS people who sent them to us and uh, so appreciated and so thoughtful. Thank you. Now I have winner, winner, chicken dinner to talk about and announce who they are. I've got Simply Botanical, both July and August are here, so I can share those with you. The Simply Defined Metallic Cardstock is back. I've got Sizzix for you. I've, I've just got a whole bunch of stuff. And like always, we're going to start simple, very easy. And then we're gonna progressively get a little more wow and a little more Ooh, and a, at the end, it's a whole lot of oh, holy smokes artichokes, I promise you. And everything that I do here, you are going to be able to do there. Even if you have this video going while you're doing it, we're just crafting together. I like cream and sugar in my coffee. Thank you very much. It's more coffee-esque than it is coffee. We were talking about this in the live chat last week. <laughs> because we live chat every Saturday morning, 8 a.m. Sunday California time on our YouTube channel. And somebody, we were talking about coffee and I said, okay, let's be clear. My coffee is not really coffee by the time I'm done with it. I mean, there's coffee in there, but I like flavored coffee to begin with. And then I like flavored creamer. And then I have my Splenda, which I put in and by the, and, and okay, sometimes there's some whipped cream on the top of it. Or if, 
If it's fall or Christmas, I'll get eggnog ice cream or gingerbread ice cream and I'll put a scoop in there. <laughs> so really, I know it's not coffee by the time it's done, but it's so yummy. So if we're spending the morning together, again, I like my coffee. I, I like my cream and my sugar with a, <laughs> with a touch of coffee. <laughs> okay, I've got winter winter to talk about and then I'm going to tilt down. I'm going to show you the Simply Botanical for June and July, no, July and August. Remember that Simply Botanical is a co-branded item between Spellbinders and Scrapbooking Made Simple. That means the only place you're gonna find them is us. Spellbinders did the entire year of Simply Botanical this year, and next year we'll have a different manufacturer that we partner with. So we try to be loyal and true to the manufacturers who are amazing to us. And instead of going around them, <laughs> around them and getting product manufactured, we work with them. So our winner winner chicken dinners from last week. Our first winner winner chicken dinner is oh, these names. Lakeisha. I got the Lakeisha. Lakeisha Abdul Azi. 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 Lakeisha Abdul Azi. I think I might be close. I actually think that I might have got that pretty darn close to what it's supposed to be. Congratulations to you, Wahoo Kachu. You are a winner winner chicken dinner here at Scrapbooking Made Simple. Now, what's our next winner winner? Who's our next winner winner? Okay, two vowels go a walking, so I'm going to assume the first one does the talking. Vialka? Vialka Cintron? Vialka, is that you? If it is, you're a winner, winner, chicken dinner. Congratulations, my dear. You also have won a $25 gift card to Scrapbooking Made Simple. And what do you have to do to claim your prize? Well, ladies, you don't have to do anything. It's already in your online account, ready for you to go and have a good time with. So congratulations to the both of you. If you want a chance to be a winner, winner, chicken dinner, we pick two every week. All you have to do is subscribe to Scrapbooking Made Simple. There's a little heart down there that says SMS. Click it, hit the subscribe button. <laughs> that was so cheesy. <laughs> shameless, right? Totally shameless. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I want my 100,000 followers. <gasps> it, it, it just, they, they, it will come. I just have to be patient. It will happen, but I need to be patient. So subscribe if you haven't turned me off. Subscribe and then post your comment, your comment below. If we are live chatting, that doesn't count. You need to post a comment below. And then we have software that randomly picks two winners every week. And you just never know when it's going to be your turn. So now we have to do the winner, winner, chicken dinner dance. And then we will get started for today. Are you ready? You're a winner, chicken dinner. You're a winner, chicken dinner. Wahoo, kachu for you. Congratulations, you two. Enjoy your, your $25 and spend it on something you would not thought to buy for yourself. Yeah, buy something that you wouldn't have thought to buy for yourself. You get what I'm going with that, right? Okay, good enough. All right, I'm gonna tilt on down. We're gonna get started for today. I'm gonna to show you the Simply Botanical, both collections, limited. Remember, Simply Botanical is limited release, just like my Simply Defined dies are. When they're gone, they're gone. So let me tilt on down, let me get started for today. We are gonna to start easy and then progressively get harder and we're gonna have a great time doing it. It's good to see you. Bye, down we go. All right, and then let me zoom on in and zoom on off my tummy. Maybe if I didn't add the ice cream and the whipped cream to the coffee, I wouldn't have the tummy either, but <laughs> yeah, well, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> so, all right, so Simply Botanical is a co-branded product designed by me so Simply Botanical is me and Spellbinders is the company that manufacture them. Every year we pick a new manufacturer to partner with and we do our Simply Botanical with them in a way of showing support and solidarity for our manufacturers. It is a die and stamp set. They are value priced at $14.39 each 
and I want to show you the samples to go with this. You ready? So sample number one. Pretty, right? So it stamps and die cuts out. And then you have a few little sentiments in there too. Stamps and die cuts out. And this time in my empty space, I put words in there. So this time I put in, you matter. Now, all we did here is cut off the extra greenery. And the you matter is a die that comes with it. And then the last sample, oh, actually I've got a few. Really cute, huh? Okay, so that was July's Simply Botanical set. Ready for you. And when they're gone, they're gone. Let me show you August's botanical set. And then we will get on to class. I'm gonna put that there. And let me bring over August. So again, stamp set, die set. And where I had extra space, I added more dies. Simply Botanical, Spellbinders Co-Brand. And let me show you some samples. Isn't that cute? Love the basket. Look at how happy these are. And all the little, you get a bunch of little dyes to go with it for fall leaves. All comes with it. The happy fall comes with it. And there we go. So, my fall basket, Simply Botanical. $14.39 for the set. You get bows and you get a bunch of little leaves and you get well, yeah, lots of little leaves. You get the stamp all ready to go to make darling things. So that's July and August, and they are available now. Yay. All right, now let's talk about today's YouTube. And let me show you some samples of today's YouTube, which is all about simply defined kaleidoscope layering dies. I do them four times a year, and... My layering dies are made up of four individual dies that will layer together to make a complete image. Now they can, you can, I'll show you how you can use one layer, two layers, three layers, or all four layers to make the image. And they are a full A2 size, but this is on a five by seven card. And they're not, $15 a die. They're not, gosh, some of people are getting $20, $22 for one die, and then you buy all three or four. You're going to get all four dies for $29.99, all of them, and they are a full A2 size. Let's see. This is Miss Belinda. And Miss and Doris. So there's four dies to make up this poinsettia image and I'm going to show you how to use them and again $29.99 for the entire set. All right let's bring them over and let's go ahead and start with the winter branches. So here's the image. There are the words that you're going to get. So warm winter wishes. 
If there was empty space, I included a few extra dies that you could then use to pop on top. And there's one, two, three, four. And when you put them together, this is what you get. But my gosh, that background die can be used just on its own. I'm going to show you how they all can be layered together or how they can be used separately. All four dies, again, all A2 size, $29.99, but are limited. When they're gone, they're gone. Our next one is my snowman. He's so cute. Love him. And then look at all the words you get with him. Because we had space. If there's space, I'm paying for the metal. So anywhere there was space, since I'm already paying for the metal, I'm going to fill it in. One, two, three, four. Turn them over. And now you can see. You can see how I pretty much filled any place there was metal. I threw a, wor a space. I threw a word in there. <laughs> if I'm paying for it, I'm going to get the most out of my money. So you get the most out of your money. And then the last one is the poinsettia. Now this one does not have a separate background die. The first two that I showed you had three dies and then a background die. The poinsettia is four dies that will make up the design and there's a reason why it took four dies to get that design. But look at all of the words I gave you. Look at all the sentiments that we fit in there. <laughs> And they are all here, ready for you to start die cutting. Will these dies go through a big shot machine? Yes. A big kick machine? Yes. A vagabond machine? Yes. A fabby big shot? Yes. A vintage big shot? Yes. A spellbinder platinum? Yes. A spellbinder platinum eight? Yes. A grand caliber spellbinder? Yes, a cuddle bug if you still have one, yes. A Gemini, yes, absolutely. They will go through all of the machines that will take standard size dies. So a sidekick, no, because this is obviously an A2 size. So that is four and a quarter wide, two wide for a, a sidekick. All right, let's get started. And I'm gonna start with the poinsettia today. So I've got all four dies here ready to go. I feel like I'm slightly off. No comments. My husband, Mr. SMS. Nothing from the uh, nothing from the peanut gallery, as he would say. All right. Well, we're just gonna go. But I do feel like it's off. Don't know why I feel that way. Maybe that's better. All right. Anyway, four dies. One, two, three, four. To get the design that I wanted, I needed to have. The poinsettias have an outline die and a main die. Beautiful. But I also wanted the leaves to have an outline die and a main die. You're like, huh? I know. Wait, I'll show you. So I'm going to cut each of these using my Sizzix Big Shot machine. And I'm going to grab some paper. So my Simply Defined Satin Card Stock is back. Yay! Don't know how long we'll have it, but we have it now. So I think I'm going to cut one. And then, do I have a darker green? You know, maybe I'll use, for the lighter green, maybe I'll use the Sizzix. They're festive for the darker green. Ooh, yeah. And then for my poinsettias, so this is the Sizzix Festive Cardstock Collection. It is meant to go with their Festive Opulent Collection, which I will be using a little bit later. But, oh, well, maybe I'll, let's see, what do I want for my poinsettias? I guess I'll do, I'll do red. And then maybe, I guess I could do a black, but I could also do, not enough contrast. How about just for kicks? 
I do a pink just so you'll be able to see the difference. I think that'll be good. All right, let's cut some let's cut some dies. I have four dies to cut. And I think I will start with my poinsettias. So my background poinsettia is the one that has all of the the least amount of detail. Can you see it has the least amount of detail while this die has a lot more detail. All the fine lines are on this one. This is just an open die. That's going to be the first die that I start with when I'm doing my poinsettias. And I guess I'm going to do those. Well, that is very contrasty, right? You'll be able to see it. I guess I'll do those in my red. So I'm just going to trim down my paper. And this is the Simply Defined Satin Paper. It has been out of stock for forever. And I will be very, very honest with you, once it sells out, I don't know that we'll be bringing it back in. Shipping from overseas has gotten to be incredibly expensive. More than, than I can, we can bear on some things. It's just getting crazy. And it's, it's become the, the companies that are able to bid high enough for shipping, get their stuff here, and the rest of us kind of have to wait until there's room. So I'm not sure that we'll be bringing the satin cardstock back in once it is gone. It's 10 sheets, it's $4.50. I think I have six different packs, and they're all just beautiful. Now, I am working on my Sizzix Big Shot machine. I've got my base plate, which is what you're going to get with your machine. I've got the Solo Shim, which is what you're going to get with your machine. I'm going to put that Solo Shim right down on top of my base plate to create a sandwich. Then I'm going to use what's called a precision base plate. And this is a workhorse of a tool. If you do any kind of intricate dies and you are working with Sizzix machines, you are going to want a precision base plate it will make your life easier. If you are running your dies back and forth and back and forth and they're still not cutting, try a precision base plate. You run it back and you do a twist and bring it, run it back and it, all the little pieces just fall right out. It's like pure happiness. So precision base plates are for Sizzix machines only. You don't want to use them with one of your other machines as it's very likely it will void the warranty and I don't know that it will work. Everybody's sandwich is a little bit different. Everybody's machine. Spellbinders machines are a little bit different than Sizzix machines and Gemini machines are different than than Sizzix machines. So you just want to be careful when using other manufacturers tools in your machine. Now I'm going to take my paper face up. I'm going to take my die face down so those little ridges are against my paper. I'm going to put it at a slight angle, just a slight angle. See how it's slightly angled? My roller is right here and I don't want my die to be parallel to my roller. It just makes it a little difficult to get it underneath and it will give you a kathump. If I just rotate it a little bit, the die will feed into the roller at a different angle and you won't get that thump. Then I need a cut plate. When you get your machine, you're gonna get two of these and they're gonna be crystal clear. They're gonna be so beautiful, but eventually they're going to look like this and that's okay. That's what they're supposed to look like. I'm gonna put it right on top and I'm gonna send it on through. Now, if you hear little creaks and cracks, it's not a problem. No creaks and cracks. And because this die is not overly intricate, I know that I don't even need to roll it back. So all my little bits and pieces, which aren't so little in this die, are coming right out. And here is my first cut. There's my first cut. It doesn't really look like much of anything. I know, but wait, we'll get it there. The second die that goes with the poinsettia die is here. And this is the one 
that adds all the detail to the top of the die. This is the one that's going to add that finishing touch that's gonna fill in all the space where you're like, well, it doesn't have any, there's nothing in between it, no definition of the petals. Yes, we're gonna get there. And I guess I'm gonna do it out of this pink. I don't know about the pink. Maybe I'll do it out of the gold. Do I have a gold piece? I just can't bring myself to do it. Let's see, do I have a gold piece here? Well, kind of. All right, we're going with it. See, that's the problem of having too many options for paper. Yeah, I'm just going to do it. What's the worst that can happen? This is so that you can see. So I've got die one, die two, bring it over. This die is a little more intricate than the die I just did. It has a few more lines in there, all the detail is in there. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna put it on an angle. I've got my base plate down. I've got my solo shim down. I've got my precision base plate. I've got my paper. I've got my die. I've got my cut plate. I'm gonna send it on through. creaks and cracks are okay and then because I know this is slightly more intricate I'm going to do a slight rotate now I can take that back piece off it's just gonna come right off and I put it this way now I'm just gonna send it that way and send it back just because if you send a die through front and back and front and back and you've never changed the die it's hitting the roller in the exact same way you're not changing how it's hitting the roller and every roller's got sweet spots sometimes there's more tension over here sometimes there's more pressure over there so without moving the die some way you're not giving it the opportunity to hit that roller in a new and unique way and you're just gonna it's just gonna not if it didn't cut going that way it's not going to cut going that way unless you do something and change it and just rotating it makes that change okay let's see so now as I peel it out you can see it's far more intricate I'm leaving back more than I'm taking with me. And then I can pop some of these out. And okay, I'm taking odds. What's everybody guessing? Am I a 50-50 make it into the trash can? Am I a 60-40? Am I a 90% gonna miss it? <laughs> let's, let's see what I got. Ready, one, two. Yeah, that wasn't so good. Okay, well, that's what the vacuum is for. <laughs> okay, so now I've got my top layer. Put my top layer over my bottom. and instantly it changes the look of the die. Instantly you've got the definition that you've wanted. Pretty, right? Easy to do. There's your poinsettias. Let me put these aside because now, now I've got the leaves to do. I've got those to work on, and those take two dies. So let's start with let's start with the more open one, and I'm going to do that in a green. What did I do with my green? Oh, here they are. So I'm going to do the more open in my green foil, 
and it doesn't look like much. The dye you're looking at going, I don't understand what the dye actually is. I get it. Sometimes it's the negative when it finally comes out and you put them together that you get that aha moment. So my background dye, and again, this is still included in the poinsettia set. All four dies come together. And let's send it on through. Now this is not very intricate. It's not a very intricate die, so chances are it will only need to go through once. I can turn it over and see that it cut very well. Grab my tweezers. Now you could absolutely save this piece of satin paper because I've got words in there. You've got oodles and oodles of words that you can die cut. All you, just like I fit them in, in the metal, you can fit them in your paper. Okay. So let's get this out. And I know this is a weird looking die. There it is. Let's put it on some paper so you can see. It doesn't really look like much, does it? I know, but you gotta trust in the process. Trust in the process. Let's do the last die of that set, which is this one. And let's do this one out of the darker green. A slight angle and send it through. I must be rubbing up against something. I hear something going, ooh, er, er, er. <laughs> I have no idea. My table must be rubbing up against something. I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but I can hear it. Now, I did a rotate and I'm going to send it back because this die is way more intricate than what the other die was. Way more intricate. And now let's see what we've got. Looks good. Pull it out. And hopefully a lot of my little pieces are just going to fall right on out. Ready? Ha ha ha. That is what a precision base plate does when you're using it with a Sizzix branded machine. That is happy, happy, happiness. If your intricate dies are not doing this, you need to get a precision base plate. And if you don't have a Sizzix Big Shot machine, well, that's the best. It, it is a workhorse, I will say. It is an absolute workhorse of a machine. And we do sell them. They drop ship straight from Sizzix, from Ellison, and we offer a Big Shot machine at a value price when you we, we bundle it with a precision base plate so that you get that precision base plate. I think you pretty much get it for free uh, on the precision base plate. So you buy the machine and you get the precision base plate for free. Okay, let's see how I do here. All right, so now I have got one, two, three, and four. Now let's build them together. Remember, this doesn't look like much of anything all by itself, but when you put it on top, Be 
piece of paper. When you line it on top, now your holly leaves have color. So you've got the dark green as the frame, as the outline of the holly leaf, and the light green is the holly leaf. But you're like, I don't want a green flower. I know. Then you take your poinsettia. right over the top. Backwards. Better. So now I've got my holly leaves and my poinsettia. Now I take the detail to my poinsettia over the top. And when all four of them are put together, you have a completed image. Do you have to use all four of them together? No, and, and the image can go this way or it can go that way. I could, I could just use these two together if I wanted. Sure, I could cut this one out of black If I cut that out of black, that just that gives you the entire image. Now what do you want to do with that? Do you want to do you want to put it on white paper and color it in? But there's your entire image. But I want to build these. So, let's take Do I want to do that? No, I'm just going to leave them the way they are. Let's take some sticky dots and let's put them together. What are sticky dots? Sticky dots are a simply defined product, hundreds of thousands of dots on these sheets of paper, literally hundreds of thousands of dots on these sheets of paper. Awesome for intricate dyes. Well, hello there. So if I put this one down first, close it up, give a press, pull it up, and now I line it on top of my bottom. four pieces of paper. That's all it takes is four pieces of paper. It'd be helpful if I did it. There we go. Four pieces of paper and some sticky dots. Line everything on up. Stick it on down. If for some reason it's not in the right place, you have time to pull it up and reposition it. Pull it up. If it's not exactly where it's supposed to be, move it to where you need it to go. Bam. Done. Now you can see my holly leaves have a light green with a dark green outline to them. Now let's go get my poinsettias. Put it down. And pull it up. Layer it right on top of the green, right on top, because now that's going to mask that dark green off while leaving your beautiful holly leaves. It 
And again, if it's not exactly where you need it to be, just lift it up and move it where it needs to go. With sticky dots, you have time to get it where you need it to be. They will eventually dry to permanent. Okay. Now we're there. Last one, top layer, sticky dots. Line it up. And let's grab a piece of Sussex glitter paper. So this is the Opulence Festive Collection. Beautiful paper, beautiful paper. Every sheet has got a specialty finish to it. Love their opulent paper. dot down press pull up We're done. May not be the colors you would have chosen, but I wanted to show you how kaleidoscope layering dies work. Now, $29.99 gets you the entire die set. It's not that we sell them individually. I know lots of companies that do, and they're like $20 for this one, and $20 for this one, and $20 for that one. Most of them don't have four dies to make the layer, but if they did, it would be $20 for that one. So there's $80 right there. Even if they were $15, let's, let's be generous and say $15, that's still 60 bucks right there for that versus my dies, which are $29.99 to get you all of it. We try to keep crafting affordable. And one of the reasons my dies are one and done is because by the time they're out, Alibaba, Wish, or Allied Express has copied them and has knocked them off. And so it's impossible for me to afford to reorder them when they've already been they've already been knocked off my kaleidoscope dies are, are heavily knocked off but for $29.99 I think the value is there all right so that is how kaleidoscope dies work now let's take it to another step let's say that you love the look and you want to do something like this but you want to keep it you don't have time to maybe do all the piecing, whatever it is. I want to work, assuming you're brand new to crafting and you've just got your die cutting machine and you're just starting out and you want to play, but you're not sure what to do next. All right, let's take the snowman. I'm going to take my snowman next. And the snowman does have a background die. Most of my kaleidoscopes do have a background die. But in order for me to get the inside of the poinsettia to be a different color than the frame, I had to do two, or the holly, I had to do two holly dies and two poinsettia dies so that you got that look. I didn't want the, the holly leaves 
to be all one color. <laughs> I needed them to have definition. I needed them to be woohoo. And I think that's pretty woohoo. So Snowman, Snowman has a great background die. He has an amazing little background die of snowflakes falling down. And then there are three dies that will make him up. We have beautiful, beautiful samples of him layered and layered and layered. I'm going to do him in just white and maybe black. I'm going to think to myself that some of you are new to crafting. You've just got your die cutting machine. You're just starting out and you just want to play and you don't have oodles and oodles of paper, but what you do have is white and black paper. We all have white and black paper. And if we don't, we know we can run to anywhere. Uh, Rite Aid, Costco, Dwayne Reed, um, everybody. So Michael's, Hobby Lobby, Joann's, everybody's got white and black cardstock. Everybody. So I'm going to cut my first two. So my this is my base die because see how open it is? This is the foundation of everything. Then my second die fits on top and adds a little more detail. And then my last die is going to give the finishing touches. And then if I want, I can die cut my, my snowflake die, my background die, and put him to the back, or I can use him just the way I want him. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut them out of white. And again, I'm gonna grab my opulent paper. You are gonna use, if you wanna use just plain white cardstock, I totally get it. I'm gonna use some of my opulent. And inside the opulent pack is 60 sheets. I think they give you 60 sheets, yeah, because there's six colors. So there's this mistletoe green and this fur. This is kind of a satiny finish. I think they might call it pearl. This is a glitter finish that doesn't rub off. The red has got kind of a satiny finish to it. It's not satin, I don't know what, pearly, I guess pearly. And then the berry red, which is a glitter. And then you've got this white, which is a pearly white, and then a white glitter. Now I wanna let you know, Sizzix is having a price increase soon. It's coming soon. So if you like opulent paper, go order it now. The dies are going to be going up in price. The paper is going to be going up in price across the board at Sizzix. They're having a price increase. So I'm going to start with cutting my background out of white. So the most open die I have, I'm going to cut first. And can you see it's got a kind of a pearly-esque to it. It's not satin. It's got kind of a pearly to it. It's very pretty. Okay, so let's cut him first. Let me turn him just a little bit. There we go. Send him on through. He's not very intricate, so he shouldn't have to go back and forth. And unlike the very last die, where all I get is really the outline of everything, he's the base die. So I'm gonna get almost his entire silhouette in paper. And let's pull him on out. Okay, so you can tell he's a snowman. Put him aside. Oh, let's pop out some of my little white pieces. And let's put him aside. 
and all of this can come close to the trash can. Then let's cut my secondary piece, which is here. It has more detail than this, but not as much detail as this one. And I'm going to cut this in white too. Now the Sizzix cardstock, because Sizzix is a global company, ooh, <laughs> this cardstock is sold all over the world. So they have it in an A4 size. A4 is slightly longer, but a little more narrow than an eight and a half by 11. So it's a little bit longer than 11 and it's a little bit narrower than an eight and a half because that is a standard size for, gosh, pretty much everywhere else. So when you get yours, you're gonna see that it's not quite an uh, eight and a half by 11 that we're accustomed to, but it is beautiful and it makes beautiful things. Now this is a little more intricate, so I'm just gonna do a rotate and I'm gonna send it on back. Okay. And let's see what we've got. So see, more of this is falling out than my last, my, my last die, which was the base of it. And let's pull it on out. And all my little pieces just kind of fall on out. That makes my life very happy. And I think I'm gonna do this in a maybe a satin blue, just so you can see, because white on white is kind of hard to see, but I wanna do something with the white on white. Let me pop out some of my pieces here. And let's grab a piece of my satin paper. Ooh, yeah, that one works for me. Does that one work for you? Mm -mm -mm. Does that say winter? Probably is in the tropical set, but we're thinking winter right now. So <laughs> I bet that's in the tropical blues maybe or in the tropical set, but I'm gonna cut it one more time just so you can see it out of a different color. So when I layer them, you'll be able to see them. And then we're gonna go back and play with that white. And rotate and send it on through. And I'm just gonna whip it on through, rotate and send it on back. You're like, that wasn't a very big rotate. It doesn't have to be a very big rotate. It just has to hit the roller in a new and unique way. And then all of a sudden, poof, everything cuts out, everything falls out. And there we go. Pop out some of my pieces and then let me show you. I think that's good. And let's clear it off. So now I have cut the base in white. base in white, and then I cut the top, the first top piece in white. So you have a white on white. Oh my goodness, he looks so cute! <laughs> See, he just kind of looks like, hmm, but then you add, hmm, and look at how cute he looks. But I cut this same layer in a different color for you. Oh, 
He's so happy. Isn't he so happy? <laughs> okay, now we have the top layer to cut. I got to keep track of these. Then I have one last layer to cut my top layer. So I'm going to put these over here and I'm going to cut this in. Let's cut this in a it says metallic black. It's more of a gloss black. So this is my vel my black velvet metallic. It's way more of a gloss. I would change the name if I could, but I was just grateful to be able to get it. So I'm telling you, it's not so metallic-y as it is a really beautiful gloss black. Let's take this and cut this. And put them in and send them through. Now this die is even more intricate because the lines are even thinner than what we've done. So we're definitely going to have to rotate this. And remember, I am on my base plate with my solo shim, with my precision base plate, my paper, and my die face down. If you were using a multi-purpose platform, you would just have your platform completely closed and then your uh, precision base plate, paper die, cut plate. The new machines are coming with the base plate and the solo shim. Oh, I'm not. Well, I suppose we could see what it sounds like. Let's go. So we hadn't heard any creaks before. Let's hear if we hear a thump at the end. There's your thump. Sometimes it's worse than that. I'm going to rotate it. It doesn't hurt the die and it doesn't hurt the machine, but it hurts your heart a little bit when you hear it. And for those of you who are new to crafting and new to die cutting, you may have thought you just broke your machine. You did not. You just need to rotate your die a little bit and it won't do that. Okay, so here's my, here's my top piece, which means I'm going to leave back even more paper. And let's pull. So this is going to be the most detailed die. Let's get all the little bits and pieces out. we're good and you know what while I'm here I'm gonna cut this just one more time and I'll cut it in like a purple something to go over that something to go over that blue let's see what color do I have in my satin paper Ooh, how about the purple hmm do we like the light purple? maybe the light purple how about the winter purple Ooh, yeah okay that one Oh, but then, no, Stacy, don't think think too long, think wrong. Let's just die cut. I'm going to cut them one more time. And that way I'll have a couple combinations to show you. And then we're going to bring back the white. Now, I didn't get all my bits and pieces out of there yet. You can still see some black in there. My guess I'm going to be just fine. Most often you don't have to have your dies completely clean when you run them through. You can't run them through 10 times and then still expect it to cut without cleaning. But most often you can get it to go through two or three times and then you'll need to get all that paper out. So roll, roll, roll. Rotate. Roll, roll, roll. And let's see what we have. That's a die cutter's dream when everything just kind of punches out and falls out. You almost want to get it on videotape because it just makes your heart happy. I guess I do have mine on videotape, but... <laughs> Yay! Get 
all those little bits and pieces out. And now I've got my top in two different colors. So I like intricate dies, and most of my designs tend to be more intricate. I like detail. Detail makes my heart happy. Okay, so we started with a white. Then we added a second white for detail. Then I could come over the top with my black for my final detail. Whoa, what a difference that makes, huh? From that to that to that. Holy smokes, artichokes. But I also did that second layer in this blue. So now I've got the second layer in the blue, and then I could put the black over the second layer. Oh, isn't he cute? Or I could put the purple over the blue for a bit more wintry. Isn't he cute? Or I could just put the purple on the bottom layer. Or I could put the black on the bottom layer. I'm losing some of the detail that I get when I, when I take away that, that second layer. I'm losing some of the detail, but the point is you have options. Or I could just Draw in his little eyes. Draw in his little eyes and his mouth and there he is, just the top layer. The whole point is having options. It's all about paper and what you can do with paper and how easy it can be to make something that looks so complicated and so time consuming with three rolls of your die cutting machine. But remember, I wanted to use the white, so I'm gonna come back to the white. Look at how pretty that is, the white on the white with the purple, mm-mm-mm. He's got a little, there, there we go. Okay, so you see how many options you have. I'm gonna put these to the side for now, and I'm gonna work with the white on white. And I'm gonna grab a piece of paper, which again, I'm just gonna use a card base there, and I'm going to tape him down. I've got my my base snowman. I'm going to tape him down to my card base with my washi tape and my cute little holder for my tape. My heart is so happy. <laughs> Sometimes it's the littlest things, honest to goodness. Okay, so I'm just going to put some washi tape down. I could use my Sizzix Maker's tape. And I'll put a little bit more. Oh, I pulled too hard. Maybe I should get my scissors makers take out tape out. Okay, let's go with this one. Don't pull so hard, Stacy. And I'm gonna put him down both sides because I want him to stay in place. pull as hard as I did. Oh, look at see it's easier if you do that. Then I'm going to make sure all of my little doodads 
all my little fallouts are out of this one. I want to make sure everything is out. And I'm going to tape him down right on top. So I'm going to line him up, do the best I can, and then tape him down on the side. Now I'm only going to tape my top one once. I want it to open and close like a book. So I've got my bottom one taped down, my bottom layer taped down, and my top one. This is for those of you who are limited in your supplies, limited in your paper, limited in your coloring options, limited in your supplies. You got a machine for your birthday present or Mother's Day or Grandparents' Day or uh, your Father's Day or your, you know, Happy Uncle's Day, whatever, you got the machine because you wanted it and everybody crowdfunded for you and they bought it as a special gift for you. And you have a few dies, but you're limited as to the rest of your resources. Do you have white paper? I know you're saying yes. I know it. And if not, you're saying, no, but you know what? There's, there's a local independent retailer right down the way. I can go get some white paper from them. And it doesn't have to be heavy cardstock. It just has to be cardstock, it, not copy paper. Copy paper won't work, but you can certainly use any cardstock. Doesn't have to be uber heavy. Doesn't have to be the opulent. The opulent's got that shimmer to it. And you want to tape them down. Now, I'm going to use markers from Ozzy Andrew. Okay, so alcohol markers. First off, our alcohol markers have their landing, by the time you see this, they will have hopefully landed in the United States. So they came from Australia and so it took a while to get here. There's some things going on in the world that are causing things to be delayed, but it, it took them a while to get them out to us and they should be landed here in the United States by the time you see this. We anticipate it taking about a week to get out of the port and through customs. That's what we're hoping for. And then it'll take about two days more to get them to us. And then we have to inventory them, count them, and then we will start to fill orders. So if you have markers on order, or, or if you don't have markers on order, this is the time to do it because what we've got left is what's online and when we're sold out, it will take a while for us to get them back in. They are $1.99. They are very much like a Copic marker, so it's an alcohol-based ink. It has the brush tip on one side. It has a bullet point on the other. We are not refilling them because they're a buck ninety-nine, but they are worth their weight in gold. What if you don't have alcohol markers? That's okay. What do you have? You do this with your Tombos, with your Copics, with uh, your Spectrum Noirs, with Sharpies. What markers do you have? And if you don't have any, then you're not going to find a better marker for $1.99. Not a better alcohol marker, that is for sure. So I have made a book out of my white. Now I'm going to go in and I'm going to color. You're going to color? Yeah, I'm going to color. So I can see, I can see where my detail is. Like here's his scarf and over here's the lantern and here's the hat. So I can take my marker whether it be an alcohol marker or not. If you're using it on the opulent paper, you're gonna to wanna to use an alcohol marker because this is more of a non-porous type paper. It has a coating on it. And I'm just gonna do a dot. That's gonna tell me I want that black. And do a dot. Doot. Then I open it up and I color. Then I close it up and I see. Have I filled my whole space in? Well, not yet. I need to color a little more. 
So I open them up and I color a little more. Then I close them up and I look at it, I'm getting close. There, his hat's now black. What about his nose? So his nose, I'm gonna put a dot down here. That's gonna tell me that's kind of the end. And I know the end is close to my border. I know I can't go into my border. So let's do his nose and let's color it orange. Now remember, I'm on white paper. So where there's orange underneath, it's on the paper. Am I done? No, I got a little bit more to go. A little bit more. So just color a little bit more in here. And then I color up here and I go, oh no, I got it on my border. Stacy, what did I do? I ruined it. But have you? Of course not. You've got more layers to go on top. You accidentally went off the lines? No big deal. It's gonna get covered up, easy peasy. So now do I have his nose done? Yeah, his nose looks pretty good. His hat needs a little bit more. So let's do his hat. See, I went into the border on his hat. Oops, no big deal. Once you put your top layer down, it's covered up. Now let's see, what do we think about his lantern? How about we do his lantern in yellow? So I lift it up. I can put a little dot if I want, just so I know where I'm going, but gosh, I can color almost this whole thing because It's just going to get filled in. Look at how cute is that? There. Now his lantern's yellow. Ha! Paper piecing made easy. No paper piecing at all. Now I've got the sides of the lantern done. Do I want to do a little bit on the candle? Put it down. And a little dot, tell me where to go. And color my candle in. A little gray on my candle. Now you can see my candle. Ha ha, right? All I'm doing is going back and forth. I don't care what it looks like under here. What I care is what it looks like up here. Now we've got his scarf. How about we do his scarf in red? And let's use this red. And so I can go in and I can kind of dot where his scarf is. Okay, so I kind of dotted where his scarf is. That way when I open it up, I kind of have an idea of where I'm supposed to color. So I need to color this whole area right here. I got a, an ant. And I know I need to color in here and I can always lay it back down
and it's just going to tell me where to color. I know I need to do this. Oh, that was pretty good. And all I'm doing is coloring in his scarf. It doesn't look so good here, but you close it up and it's a whole different thing, right? And let's get his scarf over here. So I know I need to do this. And I need to do kind of this. Oh, look at how good that is. Wow. Just do it. Okay, working for me. There, a little more right there. And now his scarf is done. Pretty simple, right? This is pretty easy. Dot there, dot there. Actually, I can just color this whole thing because it's not gonna matter. So maybe you don't want your snowman to be layered. Maybe you want to go in there and color him. But you don't want a paper piece. That would take a really long time. You got white paper? Ta-da! Now I'm going to take my last my last image. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cement my second one down. Just tape my second layer all the way down. Line it up. I didn't need to use that much tape. But okay. So now my second layer is down. What do you think I'm going to do? Let's take our black layer and lay it over the top. And that's our final layer. And that's where we'll be able to see what's the last things we need to color in. So I'm going to make a book again. I'm going to lay my top layer right on top. Tape him down. Now remember, teaching is a lot different than doing. When you're doing this, it's going to go so much faster than when I'm doing it because I'm lifting and showing and, and telling. Teaching is a little different than doing. Now I can go in and I can see clearly, oh, okay, so a little more black. And this time, I don't necessarily have to raise my book every time because I'm working on black paper. And black paper is going to absorb, no matter what color ink you use, the black is going to absorb it. So I can come right in here and I can see that I need to make this black. It has a little brim. And I can, let's see, I can go in with my red and finish touching up his scarf. And I can go right over the black. Now, why do you not just start with the black first over the base? Well, you can, but you're going to lose some of the definition. So that's why I do all three. It just gives you a little bit more of the definition of the snowman, a little bit more of the layering. And each layer has different areas that are open and closed. Okay. 
Look at how cute he is. And look at how easy that was. I just made books. Let me peel him up. Peel him up. So now you can see that I've drawn on See the difference? And now he's almost ready to go. The last thing I need to do is back him on something. So what if I take him off? Let's peel up all my layers. Take all my washi tape off. One. all my washi tape to and then my base layer which quite honestly looks like a hot mess A lot better. Now let's finish him. What do we want to back him on? Oh, how about that pretty? Should we do this? Should we do that? I don't know. Hmm. Do that or I could cut his background because remember this die comes with a snowflake snowfall background to it I think I'm just gonna I'm gonna put them together and let's see what we got so I'm gonna start not going to put any on this one that I'm going to start on my second layer. Sticky dots. And layer my number two on top of my number one. Then I'm going to take my top layer and layer that on top of here. And remember, anywhere I see where I need to fill in because, and it doesn't matter if it's black gloss paper or black cardstock paper, it makes no difference what black paper it is. Your marker is going to fill it in beautifully. So any place I missed, I can just fill it right in. black on the top oh, so cute 
and then I can take my paper and now I'm gonna draw with my black marker his little eyes and his little buttons so I know I need a dot basically I could almost do his whole face but I know I need one here and I know I need one there and then I know I need down here and here and here and there and now all I have to do is draw some dots here and here and then here I need to draw his smile so well there's his there's my dots oh yeah well that's good need a little bit lower so a little bit more here a little bit higher here and I'm just dabbing that alcohol ink marker right in there Let's see how close I get. Nope, lower. Oh, I'm almost there. So I'm drawing it on the paper so that it does not get all over my nice pristine white snowman. Am I good? Maybe a little bit more. I'm a little high, but since it's all going to get covered up anyway, it doesn't really matter. Boy, how can I make such a big dot for such a little dot? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put it down. So let's grab my sticky dots. Go ahead and put them down. Do you have white paper? Do you have black paper? And do you have some kind of a marker? Oh, yes. <laughs> Tee hee. Yay for me. Let's trim them out. And look at how great he looks on the opulent paper. This is the festive opulent. So when you buy Sizzix opulent paper, every pack is different. There's no overlap in any of the, um, of the colors. Okay, white and black. That's all I used was white and black. And I colored him myself. I just made a book and that way so so I wouldn't if I had just put the black down on top of, of the base die I wouldn't get the little details all these little details would be gone I don't want those details to be gone I like them so your opportunity is to Let's cut him. Let's cut that base real quick. 
because then I have these. Base die is the one that's most open. I'm just going to grab that paper, trim it down. Let's send them on through. He's kind of an open die, but I'm going through glitter paper now, so I'm just, do I need to? You know, I don't even know that I do. It looks really good. Maybe we don't even send it through. Let's try. What's the worst that can happen? I have to recut it. So this is the die where I'm going to keep the most of the snowman. Oh, he's so cute. Okay. So bam, just like that, he's done. piece of sticky dot. Let's see if this one's got more on it. Oh yeah. Let's put my blue down. Get all my little bits and pieces out of it. Put him right on top. And just like that for intricate dies, there you go. And then let's put sticky dot here. I'm just going to move him slightly off center of my other one because there's plenty of dots there. And wherever there's white going coming through, the dots stay. So I'm only picking up the dots where the paper is. Put my purple on top. If you have to position it, no problem. You've got a little, you've got time. And then do we like them on the purple? Ooh. How about sky blue? Ooh, okay. I like that too. Or the purple. Or the sky. Or the, nope, I'm going to go with the purple. Should have gone with my gut. You all said, no, do the blue. Too late. Changed my mind. And I can either tape him down or I can take my background die and make snowflakes. And then we're going to move on to the last die because we're going to become, we're going to go even a little bit further than what we just did. see what happens. Oh, 
Oh. <laughs> and all those snowflakes come out. It's so cute and easy to do. So do you have lots of paper to play with? Lots and lots of paper to play with? Awesome, there you go. Do you have white and black paper and you have markers? Sharpie markers, Tombow markers, Stampin' Up markers, Tim Holtz markers, whose markers? You got a combination of everybody, a few of this and a few of that? White paper, make your book and go in and color the detail in. You got this. Let's go a little bit further. They're so cute. Okay, let's go a little bit further. So I'm gonna move these off to the side and I'm gonna bring over the next set, which is the Holly Branch set. Same thing, we have four dies. This being your, well, let's find your, here's your background die. Ooh, very intricate. Very, 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 very intricate. In fact, um, let's see if it will even, let's see. I'm just going to cut it so you can see how intricate it is. I am not going to pull all the little bits and pieces out. So this is the background die for the holly branches. Send it on through. Rotate, absolutely. Bring it on back. see how I do. I think I might even need one more roll. Again, I'm not going to pull everything out. Come on. Let go. Nope. You'd have confetti for days. Intricate. And then you gotta go and you'll just go through and get all your little doodads, all your little spiralies out. But it is an intricate background that requires a precision base plate. And you just sit there and you just pick them out one by one. Okay, I just wanted to show you what the background looks like. It's a great background, but you gotta pull all the little pieces out. Okay, so let's go back to the three main ones. Now I'm gonna have those little spirals everywhere. So I have got my first die, 
my second die and my last die. And where we used white paper here because maybe that's what's in your your wheelhouse right now maybe that's what's in your crafty room right now maybe you love the die and want the die but you only, you know you you need to be frugal you're on a budget we all are on a budget everybody has a budget for their things so if if this is where you're at by gosh, no matter who you make this for, they are going to be amazed at it. They're going to be amazed that you put this together for them. And I happen to like the coloring. I like the coloring very much that I like to color. So that made my heart happy. And because I could scribble, 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 and basically you didn't see what was underneath. You have no idea I made a mistake up here that the black one above it. Who knows? Nobody needs to know. But if you have your choices of paper and you have things that you want to do, you have other options. I'm going to pull some of the, I'm going to pull, I'm going to use this green for my background. So I'm going to start with the, the, the base die and I'm going to do it in this green. And let's die cut it out. So this is the base of my holly branches, holly leaves and branches. And I'm going to send it on through. And I can take off, if I want, I can just pop that off and then do my rotate. Depending on what paper you have in your machine, most of the time the paper will stay in place and then I can just send it on back. So I think online we have three or four different bundles for the Sizzix Big Shot machines um, using different tools. I didn't want to give you free dies and things like that because dies are so personal, but tools are important. I know we have a bundle that has the magnetic platform, so if you're big on die cutting and stamping and you, stamp, you die cut out the stamps, then the magnetic platform is your best friend. If you are into intricate dies, then the Precision base plate is your best friend. We have, I think we have three, maybe three different bundles based off of different tools that you get with your machine. And again, they're shipped directly from Sizzix. They take care of it for us. They drop ship them for us. Otherwise, the postage would be, we, well, we couldn't do it. I think for us to ship a big shot machine, it's close to like $30, which is insane because we are not big enough to get uh, special rates with uh, UPS or FedEx or so we where we it's the only way we're able to offer you a machine at, at a price that seems even remotely competitive. <laughs> okay. So there's die number one. Pretty, right? Let's cut die number two and let's do it in a dark green. Um, so I'm gonna bring back over that cardstock and I'm gonna pull, oh, do I have a sheet right here that I used earlier? I do, so I'm gonna use this. But also in the Sizzix Opulent Pack, there is a beautiful green that's glittered. This one. And you know what, I, I've already pre-cut one out of this glitter, but I'm gonna do it for you so you can see why I pre-cut. So I'm gonna, let's cut die number two. And I'll do it out of the glitter green just so you can see what's gonna happen. So 
So the glitter green, well, the glitter paper from Sizzix in their opulent collection, it's backed on regular paper. All of their opulent paper is backed on regular paper, but the top is a coated paper. It's almost like a glittered plastic. It feels very smooth and suede-like, but it definitely is got a coating to keep that glitter from flaking off. It doesn't come off at all. So it die cuts beautifully. Let's send it on through. So this is my layer number two. A little more detail than my layer number one. So I'm going to take that back piece off and rotate it and send it on back. And like I said, I've already pre-cut one of these for you so that you don't have to watch me pick every little piece out. So it's cut well, no problem. And the big pieces come out easy peasy. But because it's a coated paper, look how nicely it holds together. You kind of have to work it to get it out. Not that you have to work it hard. It's not like there did, it didn't cut through and you're struggling to get the little pieces out. It's that because of that coating, they just don't want to fall out on their own. Could you cut this without a precision base plate? Not a chance. So you just have to go in there. The green is beautiful. It really is beautiful. But unlike the other, you know, regular paper, okay, so, so I'm not going to pull all this out, but I am going to cut this in just the plain cardstock. So you can see the difference. You have to be willing, is that big enough? Nope. You have to be willing to, to work it. Not that you have to like work it to get them that they're not cut all the way through and you're trying to tear it a little bit to get them out or you have to snip them out. They're cut all the way through. They're just, they're just holding on. <laughs> they come right out. <laughs> like they do, they come right out. Let's get that big piece out. You just have to, it just, they just want to stay in there because of the coating of the paper. And it doesn't help that this is a super intricate die, but it will come out. And I have pre-die cut one. So let's pull just cardstock, just basic cardstock over. And let's cut it. And send it through. And then back. So this we're going to do something completely different. Maybe you have various colored papers and you want to use various colored papers. But you still want to color. Okay, right away it tells you. <laughs> right away you know. One of these things ain't like the other. I mean, look at that. That's the difference between cardstock and glitter cardstock. Not that the glitter won't come out, it will, and it's beautiful when it does, but you have to have a few minutes of time to be willing to sit there and pop all your little pieces out. I mean, even with this, I have to get my little, my little pine cone pieces out, but still, that's a lot easier than the glitter paper and everything cut beautifully. But I do like intricate dies and this is a really intricate die. I can hear the SMS girls going, um, yeah, it is. Hello. <laughs> Took me an hour because they want to do it out of the glitter paper, I'm sure. <laughs> That's okay. Anything worth doing is worth doing right. <laughs> I just heard the rolling of SMS staff's eyes. <laughs> okay, 
Okay, so by the magic of TV and my Easy Bake Oven, <laughs> there, I have it in both glitter and in cardstock. So let's layer it. I still have one more layer to go. Let's layer it. And let's take a piece of oh, this over here. Okay, let's just cut that down. Just so I can show you. All right. Up to you how you want it to go. You have options. But there it is. And you're saying, that is really beautiful and I really like it. But pine cones are not green. No, you're right, they're not. Well, I suppose depending on time of the year. But I wanted the holly to have different colored. I wanted you to be able to layer to see the holly leaves have a different color and that swirl behind it. So what are we going to do to make those pine cones a different color? No worries. Hello, marker. Hello, marker. We're not on white paper now. No, no, no. We're on colored paper. And I'm just going to go in there and where I have a pine cone, I'm just going to put some brown marker down. And now my pine cones are brown. So anywhere I see a pine cone that I want to color, and you can tell where they are, they're the kind of the big open spaces, big blobs of paper with no design in them. And if I accidentally go over the line, no big deal, because my paper is going to cover it. And now my pine cones are brown, like a pine cone should be. You want to use different browns? You can. I suppose I could go in there with, I don't know, what color is this brown? Definitely a lighter shade of brown. I probably could even pick some of that dark brown up and wipe it off and pick some of that dark brown up and make it a little lighter if I want it and wipe it off. And by the time you put your top piece over it, you've got pine cones that are done. So now you've got your green for your holly. I could go in there and I could take my red. There's berries in there. What if I wanted to color my berries red? Anywhere you see a berry, color it red right on top of the paper. 
Uh, let's see. Are those berries? Let's line that back up top. So now I'm coloring my berries red and my pine cones brown and my holly leaves green. But I'm not done yet. I have one more die to cut. And this time I am going to cut it out of the glitter paper. Do I have enough here? I do. So let's cut this right out of the glitter paper. And this is the very last layer to this die. Let's move these to the side. And this is the most detailed die, but it really is just a branch. Now this die alone, you could use for almost anything. You could trim the little berries off and you could put birds on that and butterflies on that. You could put cherry blossoms on that. This die alone will make cards throughout the entire year. Okay, send it through. And pull off my background just because I can. And send it back. And almost everything is going to come out. So definitely save these for your sentiments. Absolutely. As I put mine in the trash, but. And. Tweezers. Pull it out. And this is your very last layer to go on top. Pop out all my little holly berries. And so you can leave it white as if it was snow. Or we're going to color it. So I mean, I get all my little holly berries out. I try not to pre die cut anything. That way you see it when I see it. We don't edit, we don't voiceover, we don't dub, we don't pre, pre, I try not to pre die cut. I want you to be able to see it when I see it. And if I make a mistake, well then I make a mistake and I recut it. So then I can put this one right on over. And you're saying, I don't like the white. Me neither. <laughs> I'm going to take the white off and we're going to color it. I'm going to grab that marker. And I'm going to come in here. Let me get a white piece of paper so you can see. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to daub some brown right onto my branch. I'm not going to do the frame. I'm going to leave the frame white. But where my branch is, I'm just going to daub some of that color. Now you will need an alcohol ink to do this if you're doing it on glitter paper. If you're not doing it on glitter paper, then try your marker. You don't want it to be too dark. You may need to use a light brown because by the time the light brown goes into your, your a, a paper that is meant to absorb ink, it will darken up. For a buck 99 though, you want to color glitter paper, whatever color you want to make it, 
You can't go wrong with Ozzy Andrews alcohol markers. And I'm daubing. I'm not coloring because I don't want to ruin my nib. This is a coarse glitter. I want to be careful with that nib so that I can use it anytime. So if I just daub the ink and dot, 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 then my nib doesn't get harmed. I will tell you, I am 100% positive, 100% positive that I will have replacement nibs soon in a five pack. It was the one thing that I said, oh, Andrew, we have to have it. That way, if something happens to your nib, no big deal. You've got more. I'm also talking to him about an empty pen so we can take alcohol ink in various colors and fill it in our pens. Wouldn't that be fun? Okay. So I've dob, 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 dob to make my branch. Uh, looks like I need to dob a little more here. And now let's put that on top. And all of a sudden that branch becomes far more interesting, far easier to see. Oh, but what about the holly or the little berries? Okay, grab your red. Same thing. Dot, 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 dot. Anywhere you see a little berry, dot it red. You're not losing the glitter. The glitter's coming through the ink. The ink is transparent. That glitter is going to shine right through that ink so beautifully. So you'll have color and you'll have glitter, but the color, well, I mean, it's, you, you couldn't do this with, with glitter paper. You'd be cutting and gluing down different pieces on top of different pieces to get this look. But if you start with a piece of glitter paper and the opulent pack has got it's a beautiful glitter paper because it's got multi shades of glitter. It's multi iridescence. It's not like all green. It's not like a warm hue or a cool hue. It's it's a, a kaleidoscope of colors. So now, no matter which way you look at it, oh, I got to do a little more brown there. Oh, brush pins better. Okay. No matter what way you look at it, that glitter twinkles at you. It winks at you. It says, hello, without saying, hello. It says, hey, hey girl, hey. And it's the only part you've got glitter on, except for maybe my background. And look at how pretty is that. But what if you say, huh, I think I still want it a little subtle, a little more subtle. Okay, let me grab another piece. I love this paper. I'm going to end up going through all of this paper in this show, but that's okay. Oh, hello. I'm going to cut that top piece again. You're like, really? Yes, really. You have to see the difference. It's important. So let's just cut this top piece. And of course you could do this with any layer that you want. And let's send it on through. that little background piece and then I'm going to rotate it, send it on back so with the opulent paper packs it's nice because you can do all of these 
all of these three designs out of the two, out of the cardstock and the opulent festive, the festive cardstock and the festive opulent. But then that satin paper is so pretty too, and it's a completely different look than the opulent or the cardstock. So see how everything, everything just falls on out. That's a really happy day. And I'm gonna color again. Only this time, I want it a little subtler. I don't want it to be so um, bold in the colors. I'm not gonna lighten my colors to get that. I want it to look almost as if the snow is sitting on top of the colors. How am I gonna achieve that? Well, remember when I told you that the Sizzix Opulent Paper starts on paper? The backing is made of paper, and then they layer this coat of, of glitter, plastic, foil, whatever it is that goes on top of the paper for whatever finish they're looking for. So you've got kind of a non-porous finish on top, yet a very porous finish on the back. Sometimes the back side is where you want, well, where you want to be. <laughs> Sometimes, <laughs> well, not my back side. I'd like a little off the back side, frankly. <laughs> But sometimes you just need to flip it over. Okay, where is that? Let's bring that on over. So I'm going to take the glitter side and I'm going to put it down. And then I'm going to grab my marker and I'm going to color right on the back side where my branch is. I don't have to dab because I'm on paper, so I know I'm not going to hurt my nib. Wherever my branches are, I'm going to lay down some color. What happens with alcohol ink? It bleeds through paper. Alcohol ink will always bleed through paper. Oops. So if I color this on the back side, now I don't want to take a big piece of this paper and color it all brown and then die cut. That's a waste of good paper because the stuff that falls out, I can cut my sentiments out of. It's still pristine white. Okay, so I've got my Brown is almost there. Let's go in with a little bit of my red and do my little holly berries. And again, I don't have to dab because I'm using it on paper, not on glitter. I'm not on the glitter side. I'm on the back side of glitter. The 10th natural wonder. Inking on the back side of glitter paper. As long as that glitter paper has got a paper base to it. And you're like, but okay, I still don't get it. I know, you have to wait. Give me a moment. I'm getting there. And I'm just coloring all my little holly berries. And... Okay, I think I'm done. So here we have this one. That is very blingy, very glittery. Here we have this one. That is way more, it almost looks like there's snow on the top. We've colored from the back and the ink has absorbed into the paper, but it hasn't covered up the glitter. It hasn't masked it. Here, you can see the difference between them. One is much more vibrant in color, much deeper in color, much softer in color. 
This one looks kind of like the like snow has drifted on it. This one looks like a, a branch. You have options. We took the background and colored it in. It looks like a hot mess until you put over the top piece and then all of a sudden those fabulous little pine cones become pine cones. And then we put over the top of that our branch. And do we like the more subtle branch where it still looks like there's a dusting of snow over it? Or do we like the more festive bright branch? It only makes the difference if you color on the top or you color on the back side. Back side, flip it over. It, it just looks kind of frosted as opposed to coloring directly on the glitter. And again, the only reason why I can do this is because this paper starts as paper and then they put down the coat of glitter on top of it but it starts as base paper and I love the frosted look it's slightly softer it's a little it's a little softer for me and it just kind of finishes it off And then when I put it all together, it really is just happiness. But I didn't do anything difficult, nothing hard. Satin paper, simply defined satin paper. I could use just the cardstock. Oop, I had it right the first time. I could use just the cardstock, not even the glitter. And then I could put on my dusting of glitter. my dusting of glitter, and then I can back it. Boy, I need to, I need to glue these down to each other. Okay, so there's that. And no, it's definitely my, the other way I need to flip. Okay, glue these on down to each other. Yes, there we go. I love glittering the back side. It leaves that little bit of frosty to it. Don't you feel cold? Can you feel the shiver? Hello? Or you can be more bold in your coloring and color on the front side. Now you get 10 sheets of each opulent paper and then you get 10 sheets of each of my satin. You decide which one works best for you. They're beautiful. Okay, let's put this one together. Let's see if we can get this one knocked together. So then it is done. So I'm going to start with. I'm just going to use the. I'm going to use the cardstock one that I cut. Put that down. Pull it up, put it right on top of my satin where I've colored my pine cones.
just like that. Done. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take, where'd my soft one go? I'm gonna take my soft one. And put that down. Pull that up. And bring this over. And marry this up. I did not lay down my first one very well, but that's okay. And then I'm going to take my whole thing. Gosh, I don't even know. No, too red. Definitely too red. How about... I don't know, too green? Decisions, decisions, and then trim it out. Ta da! And we colored straight on the paper. And we colored straight on the glitter, both the front and the back side of glitter. Tenth wonder of the world, coloring on the backside of glitter. Who knew? Love the soft look it gives. So where did we start today? Okay, we started all the way back here where we just die cut and layered. Die cut and layered, that's all we did. Easy peasy. And then we die cut and layered on our snowman but more importantly, we took plain white paper and made him fabulous. What if we changed him into, what if we didn't do him on a white background? Did we do the blue background? Oh, did I do two? Well, ta-da! <laughs> Which one do you like better? <laughs> oh yeah, he's my second one. No, my first one, he's my second one. <laughs> Super cute, right? <laughs> and here we just layered, easy peasy, just like we did here. And then we took colored paper and inked the colored paper so that you could color in what you need to color in. And we took the glitter paper and colored that as well, giving you a fabulous look. So lots and lots and lots of options today. Easy to do. Any level of crafter can do this. Any level of crafter, any budget of crafter can do this. And it doesn't have to be done with just my dies. What dies do you have? And again, this is my one and only holiday collection for 2021. And when they're gone, they're gone. And please don't buy them on AliExpress or Alibaba or Wish. Please, <laughs> breaks my heart a little bit. Okay, so what do we have for you today? Okay, so what's on sale? It's an everyday low price, $4.50. We've got the different packs of the metallic satin cardstock depending on the colors that you like. You get uh, two of each color. And the only thing I can say is that the black, the black isn't so much a metallic as it is a gloss. Yeah, not so much a metallic, but more a gloss. So 
You've got all of that, $4.50 It's simply defined. I can't do it any less than that. Then for the, we'll, we'll keep them on, we'll keep them at the $1.99, but if you want to ensure that you get your, your pins, we'll put all of the pins on sale, the $1.99, Aussie Andrew Couture Creations alcohol markers. Please pay no attention to the numbers on the caps. They mean nothing. They only mean something to Aussie Andrew. I don't think he realized that the numbering is kind of important on Copics and people you, you buy based off of the number combinations. With his markers, you buy based off of the color that you want, but you're not paying $7.99 for a sketch marker or even when they're on sale for six bucks. No, you're paying $1.99 for his markers. So even if on sale, the sketch markers, you're still getting three for the price of one sketch. They're a great marker, pay no attention to the numbers. Had he talked to me about this before he did them, I would have said, oh, but that's why the checkbook is coming. I have him making a checkbook for these. I have him getting the um, the refills for the zero zero pen. I have him hopefully getting empty markers and I have him getting the nibs. So those are the four things I'm working, I'm pushing for with Ozzy Andrew. So all 108 will be on sale. I've got the Simply, no, the Sizzix, <laughs> don't I wish? <laughs> I wish it was simply to find opulent paper. Oh yeah, baby. I've got the Festive Opulent. It's 60 sheets. There's 10 of each of the fi of the finishes and they're all a they're all a specialty finish and then the coordinating festive cardstock to go with it. So we'll do an I want it all. I want it all on these two or you can just buy them separately. And then I've got the dies for you. Now I can't do an I want it all on the satin because for some reason we got in more of some colors than other colors. And like I said, I have a feeling we won't be able to get it back until until shipping comes down in price because it's just going crazy. Okay, so let's see the dies. So the first one is the poinsettia. Elena has done storyboards. So the background, these two go together, these two go together, and then you put all four of them together and you get all of the sayings as well. So here she's layered them together in the different combinations that you can do. Pretty, right? I hope you like them. It's my one and only Christmas collection for 2021. This be it. Then I have the holly branches that I was just working on. And same thing. Oh, I bent one. Sorry, Elena. You've got the background here. She did the background for you. Bless her heart. And then the three different dies that make up the finished eye piece. And this is a background can absolutely be used. And then I gave you different things that you can pop up. So if you want to pop your, your, um, pine cones up or you want to pop some branches up, you absolutely can. And then here she's put some together. I want to do them this way. That's how I want to do them. And that's the one we finished with. And then last but not least, the snowman. And your four dies that make up your snowman. So your base die, and then your second die, and then your top die, and your background if you want it. And then here she has put them all together. I love this combination, Elena. I love the tans and the grays, the white, that's beautiful. So different combinations of the same layer. So eliminating a layer, changing up a layer. And then she put some combinations together using the different backgrounds. Like this is the poinsettia die, but this is the snowdrift background that comes with the snowman. And here's the holly branch die with the snowdrift that comes with the snowman. And here's the background for the for the holly branch, but
but it's with the snowman and the background for the holly branch, but it's with the poinsettia. And here, she's just used the background of the poinsettia to lay the snowman right on top and the poinsettia on the back of here. Okay, samples. Are we ready? So I showed you this one already. And these are Elena samples. Now that's, I showed you in white because the girls, they really do an amazing job on them. But I don't want you to feel like you can't do this. You can. It is only paper. And it was only white paper and some markers on my snowman. And if you've got different papers to play with, play with them. Look, you've got a sage in there. You've, you've got the satin red going on in there. Play with the layers. Look at this one. This one's white on white on white. I don't even know if you'll be able to see it with the camera, but it's stunning in person. I mean, it is jaw dropping in person. White on white on white is so sophisticated and elegant. And here she just used the background from the holly. That's die number, that's the base die that doesn't look like much, but look at what she did with it. And here you've got the background die that goes with the holly branch. And she just used the background die and put a topper and look at what she did with it. So the dies can be used independently of each other. Here's the snowflake die out of the mystic, mystical opulent collection. This is from the mystical opulent, isn't that pretty? So these are all Elena. And then I have Belinda. Yay, Belinda, I love this one. Oh, it makes my heart so happy. Love, love, love this one. And here she went ahead and see, she used the extra dye to die cut her pine cones and make them brown and her little black cat. Hello, Belinda. And then I love, 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 love this one too. I don't know if the camera can pick up that, the, the glossy paper against the, the dark green mirror paper against the light green. I mean, this is rock star Belinda. In person, this one is fabulous. I hope it looks as good on camera. Oh my gosh, amazing. Then I have Claire and see Claire, look at, she just took the branch from the, the holly branches and fussy cut out a bird and put Merry Christmas. It's got the background, but look at how beautiful that can be. You can use this branch for anything, anything. And then Claire's snowman, love, love, love. And Claire's background, her holly leaf, just the one layer. And then she die cut out because I gave you the extra die to do the pine cones. She die cut them out, but she just used one layer. She didn't use all three. And then look at this beauty. Hello. Oh, that looks good. And again, she only used one of the layers of the background. She didn't use both layers for the, the holly leaves. She just used one. And how cute is this? Here she used the background dye. That's the background dye for the holly branch. And oh my gosh. Okay, you'd pay big bucks for this card somewhere. Well, all these cards, they're amazing. And then look at this, warm winter wishes 
in the silvers and in the sage. So that is Claire. Then last but not least, I have Miss Doris. And I showed you this one already. Oh, hello. <laughs> and here we have, isn't that beautiful? Kind of a distressed look on the, on the poinsettias. Isn't that fabulous? This is Doris. And then one more. Very light. See, I just think that looks so elegant with the pops of color. And then we have the branch. With all the layers going on and her snowman. Cute, right? Isn't he wonderful? Okay, and then I do have a couple layouts. Doris, put this layout together for you. So you've got the holly branches. You've got your snowman down here. All done in your, that's your Sizzix opulent reds and just a beautiful layout. So pretty. Three pictures down below, main picture up front. She cut off the frame. So she just cut him, she cut the frame off and that way he stands alone. You don't have to keep the frames on the dies, you can just cut them off. And then I have one from Elena. So Elena, this is a MDF wood picture frame. And of course, of course. <laughs> Isn't that so cute? <laughs> and you've got your snowman down below. Would not be Elena if we did not have lights. Has to have lights. And gosh, Elena, it would be cute if they went on and off like that all by themselves. <laughs> I get myself in so much trouble sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, do they make one, Elena, that blinks? Ooh, something to look into. <laughs> so a picture frame, MDF. All right, you guys. It's me, Stacy, Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com. Where are you gonna get all this stuff? Well, the Simply Defined, Simply Botanical, me, it's mine, so. I can't send you to another independent retailer. I can send you to an independent retailer for paper. I can send you there for the Sizzix cardstock and the Sizzix opulent. I can send you to an independent retailer if you need markers. If you want Ozzy Andrews markers, you're gonna find them here. We have the exclusive on them. And they, by the time you're seeing this, hopefully they've landed in the United States. Now we just have to wait through for them to get out of the port through customs and delivered to us. And then we'll organize them and start getting them, fill, filling your orders with them. So a buck 99 though, you just, you can't go wrong with that. Um, all right, you're gonna find it in Scrapbooking Made Simple. I hope you had a good time today. I hope you learned that you can, you can be simple and elegant and be on a budget and it's okay. There's no, you, we're not trying to keep up with the Joneses here. No, we're not, we're not trying to, to, to we're, we're living the life that we have and embracing the life that we have and what we have and making the most out of it making the most out of it, absolutely. And no matter what you make, the minute you give it to somebody else, even if you think it's the worst thing you've ever done, their eyes open up and they look at it 
And it's so heartfelt. It's so meaningful to them. If you're a mom or a dad or a grandma or a grandpa or an aunt or an uncle, whomever, if you've ever been given something from a child that they brought home from school, I guarantee you cherished it. I guarantee you the minute you saw it, you thought it was the best picture of a school of fish or an octopus or a bus or a picture of you. I bet if they drew a picture of you, you thought it was the best picture of you ever. And that's how somebody else feels when you give them something from your heart. Don't forget that. Remember that feeling and then looking at that child's face when you were just filled with joy. Priceless. Absolutely priceless. Now that my boys are 19 and 20, it kind of breaks my heart a little bit, but <laughs> I want them to be little again. <laughs> but I don't want to go through teenage years again. No. <laughs> Okay, it's me, Stacy. Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com. Find us online, and uh, I'll look to see you next week. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye, everybody. <laughs>